For slip casting in particular, you always want to use number one pottery plaster. Um, it's engineered for strength and porosity and um, the absorption of water from casting slip. Um, our ratios for mixing plaster is one to 0.7 plaster to water. So for instance, 10 pounds of plaster um, goes into seven pounds of water and so forth. Um, as far as figuring out volume, the, form, the method that I use, um, I've figured out that seven and a half pounds of plaster will make a six by six cube. So you can take that sense of volume and adjust it accordingly. Is that fill six by six area? Is that twice that? Is that half that? And then you can figure out your ratios here just by adding each column. So that being said, I would highly recommend not buying uh, molding plaster or any other type of plaster from the hardware store. Um, they're often too dense um, and they're not gonna absorb the water the way you want to and you're not gonna build up the nice thickness that you want um, on the cast walls. Um, the other thing I wanna mention about plaster, just like any other clay material, um, the particles are extremely fine and they go into your lungs and of course they never come out and they can harden in there. So I would always suggest wearing a dust mask or a respirator um, and also the material can be quite harsh on your skin. So um, those of you who have sensitive skin may want to wear gloves. So the next step, uh, we need to weigh out our plaster. Um, I have two buckets here and, and a good scale. You definitely need a pound scale, um, depending on the size molds you're going to use. Something up to 25 pounds would be a good thing to have on hand. Uh, I'm going to start with my water. And for this mold here, I'm going to overshoot it, and it's not a bad idea to mix a little bit more plaster you need, than you need, just in case there is some spillage. Um, I'm going to go ahead with 10 pounds of plaster, um, and that's going to be to 7 pounds of water. I'm going to go ahead and weigh out the water. I need to zero this out on the scale with the bucket on it. Or zero, and like I said, I'm going to go with 7 pounds of water. So I'm going to weigh out the plaster now, it's zeroed out, and at this point I'm going to put my dust mask on. I'm shooting for 10 pounds of plaster. That's good, 10 pounds. So once your plaster and uh, water has been weighed, uh, what you wanna do is over the course of approximately a minute, slowly sift the plaster into the water. Um, avoid dumping large quantities in at once because what we're looking for is uh, a really nice, even absorption of water to the plaster. I like to kind of spread it around so you're not dumping it all right in the same place. Like I said, if you get too many large chunks or piles in there, um, it's not gonna absorb and you're gonna end up with a, a chunkier mixture. So we're looking for something really fluid. Okay, so I've sifted the plaster in and it, I'm just gonna let it sit here and I'm just gonna watch it and I'm watching the water absorb my um, island of plaster there. And once it's, I can see it's taken up most of it, um, I'm gonna grab the drill and, and blunge this thing or mix it violently. I'd say that looks pretty good. It's not absorbing plaster at a very high rate. I can still see there's a little bit going down into the water, but 
I'd say that's probably pretty good. So I'm gonna send, uh, spend like 45 seconds to a minute really kind of violently agitating this. So I notice it's already starting to thicken up. Uh, so I'm gonna give it a stir here for another less than a minute or so, and this is just continually mixing it, but it's also now starting to release the air bubbles. They're rising to the surface. Of course, we want to keep any air, as many air bubbles as possible out of the plaster mixture. So I guess I should add that uh, you always want to use cold water. Uh, the warmer the water is, the faster your plaster is going to set up and always add the plaster to the water, never add the water to the plaster. Otherwise, what you're gonna get is a big chunk of dry plaster sitting on the bottom that's not gonna properly mix in with the water. Okay. Now I feel like it's pretty mixed. I'm gonna tap the sides a little bit. Release any more air bubbles. And now I have about a minute or so that this can sit here and start to set up a little bit. And over the course of this next minute, I'm going to look at this and I'm going to run my finger across the top every couple seconds. And at the point that I see um, a, a, a visible line that stays there or a, like a wake, um, then it's ready to pour. So I'm just running my finger right across the surface and um, what, it's, what this is doing is giving me some kind, type of a gauge as far as um, how, how far the plaster is in its setting up process. So I don't want to pour it in whenever it's extremely fluid because that's going to be more prone to seepage through gaps and stuff like that. I want to, I want to have something that's maybe the consistency of heavy cream or a little bit thicker than that. So the trick to pouring this in is nice and even and smooth. Try not to splash around because that's going to create air bubbles. And don't pour it in so fast that it's going to push your model off from center. And I'm going to fill this up um, just like we wanted the caudal boards, approximately an inch and a half to two inches from the widest part of your model. I'm going to go over the top about an inch and a half or two inches. That's good. Wouldn't hurt just to tap the side of your table, get any other air bubbles out and level off the surface. That looks pretty good. It's gonna take about 15 to 20 minutes and the plaster is gonna heat up. And then once it heats up and then it's cooled, um, we can take our boards apart and try to take our model out.